Of course, that's in the last 24 hours. That's the uh, spokesperson uh, for uh, the Prime Minister in uh, Israel uh, discussing that with CNN. Uh, Ted Opitz decided to do something about it, as I say. He's a Conservative uh, MP for Etobicoke Centre. And, Ted, you just got back within the last 24 hours? Yeah, last night. Okay. Let's start off with why you went to Israel in the first place. You know, it's always most important when you're able to, to get on the ground and, and be able to see the situation for yourself and uh, talk to the people affected and, uh, and basically compile the data with your own eyes as, as best you can. It's a complex situation, um, very dangerous obviously and, and uh, for both sides uh, right now in this conflict. Um, but uh, and talk to experts and, and leading uh, people on the ground as to, to what their thoughts and opinions are about it. So that's uh, that's one of the reasons. And I you heard. didn't go by yourself. No, I didn't go by myself. We as a group of parliamentarians. Uh, it's myself, David Sweet, uh, Randy Hoback, uh, Carolyn Bennett from Liberals, John McCallum, and Senator Grant Mitchell. Okay, so we've got representation from some other parties. Mm -hmm. Overall, what was the f feeling like in Israel? Um, you might be surprised. The, the, the people of Israel uh, are, are tremendously upset with uh, the amount of casualties on both sides. Uh, the feeling from the average Israeli, and that's another good reason to go, just to talk to the average Israeli. You know, they, their hopes for the, the, uh, the well-being of the Palestinian people um, is, is one for uh, freedom, democracy, rule of law, the, the ability to, to progress as a people and this is something that is important to them and I found that to be a refreshing point of view despite what's been going on. We've been in a place called uh, uh, Ashkelon and they have actually been getting rocket attacks since 2001 and at one point, uh, one year, I think it was last year, they, they had approximately 1,300 uh, rocket strikes in their area. So kids just playing have to, to be in sheltered areas, near shelters, you know, outside time is often limited, that sort of thing. Uh, and you could tell the stress uh, and the trauma uh, on, on a lot of the folks there. So it's, uh, it's enlightening to, be, to see some of that. But, you know, let me tell you that um, we're, we're distressed for, for casualties on both sides in, in Canada. We, we uh, don't want to see anybody uh, killed in this conflict. Clearly, that has been happening. Uh, you know, a number of Israeli soldiers have, have been killed and, and clearly a number of uh, Gazan uh, citizens have been killed. But I would suspect in that number is a high number of also uh, Hamas combatants, which is, is concealed in, in that overall number. And that's something that needs to be considered in the overall uh, count that, that is being given and, and by who's giving it. It has to be questioned as well. So this is something that uh, we, we look at. I mean, Canada condemns all terrorist groups. And people have to understand Hamas is a terrorist group. Mm. And you'll hear calls for Israel and Hamas to sit down and talk and negotiate. Well, that's a very difficult proposition when in Hamas's charter, right at the very no first number of lines, is the destruction of Israel and calling on all um, Islamic people to kill Jews. That's a very difficult starting point for any negotiation, which makes it, quite frankly, impossible with that particular group. Now, let's understand uh, Gaza. Gaza has got approximately 1.8 million people. 30,000 of those are, are Hamas terrorists inside. These people are being used by Hamas. The uh, rocket systems are, are found in schools, are found in mosques. The tunnel systems are absolutely extensive. Uh, but to be clear, you didn't you didn't go to any of these, or no, or did I, didn't, you? I didn't go to Hamas. I didn't go to uh, Gaza, Gaza. Uh, and the reason why is uh, not that I, I didn't have a personal desire to go there, but I would put others at risk if we went there as a parliamentary group. Uh, this is a high-profile target, and the people that would be assigned to protect us would be at risk. I'm I'm not going to have the death uh, of innocent people on my ha on my hands uh, just to protect me to be able to to take a look. It was important to, but there are a lot of. Uh, very good sources uh, to look at what is going on in there. In fact, many of the journalists haven't even stepped foot in Gaza, although there are many there right now. Uh, and so there I'm are some good sources. Just, just quickly, yeah. because we, I do want to come back to it. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back in a minute. Sure. I believe it's important that organizations outside of the Palestinian community should be not afraid to speak out and lend their voice to supporting the Free Free Palestine movement. What we need to do is begin to put the pressure on this despicable Tory government that stands so squarely with the oppressors. 
Okay, I said uh, Ryan or the OFL at an anti-Israel rally. Ted Opitz is here, MP for Etobicoke Center. Ted, we uh, finished the, and I do want to talk about uh, how this is all coming home. Mm. But I want to continue that discussion we're having about the um, tunnels. Right. And uh, you see what's happening with the tunnels. Well, the tunnels are, are were probably underestimated in the numbers of tunnels. And, and Israel uh, has been letting through a lot of building supplies over the years to, to enable, uh, and, and a lot of these building supplies are, are financed. By by eight dollars around the world, you know, In, including Canada. Yeah, well, Canada's given sixty six million dollars to the Palestinians in both the West Bank and Gaza for for building. I don't know if any of that has been used for this. We we try to always uh, contribute through credible NGOs and, and account for taxpayers' dollars wherever they are. But definitely through the UN and others, um, you know, a lot of the, these building materials have gone through, and Hamas has found a way to weaponize building materials because these tunnels are extensive, and the intent of the tunnels is one intent: it's terror. Uh, they, they dig the tunnels underneath the border of Israel, in, in some cases as far as 600 uh, meters into, um, the, uh, into Israel, uh, with the intent of popping out of the ground and, uh, and, and killing as many people as they can, raising havoc and terror. Um, they, they, of course, did that and, and killed several Israeli soldiers uh, a few days back. And uh, in one instance, it was discovered that one was coming up under the living room of somebody's home. Can you imagine? No, I can't imagine that. So, so, so this is a problem. You've got a d distinct sense from the Israelis that these people are not going to be able to change their tact. They're still going to be hardcore? Well, that's my opinion. Um, I, they are hardcore, and, uh, and they're fanatical. So, uh, again, I, I, I bring you back to their charter. Their charter is to destroy Israel and to kill Jews. That's a very difficult starting point for any negotiation. However, they use the, the innocent Palestinian people as human shields. Again, you know, their firing positions are next to schools and mosques and other places where civilians reside. The Israelis have been very good about warning people in advance that they are coming through leaflets. They have electronic means of telling people they're coming. They fired warning shots saying, look, the Israeli army is here. Get out of the way. Um, but I'm afraid uh, Hamas is, is using uh, people as human shields and, and consequently for, uh, for media using that as a talking point, which is absolutely reprehensible. You know? and, uh, and by the way, they've now violated, I think it's a fifth ceasefire, within 90 minutes, two hours. Uh, the 72-hour ceasefire that was just called. They, they attacked a group of Israeli soldiers with, I think, a suicide bomber, killed several, and kidnapped one of those soldiers. Um, mm. You know, how do you, how do you expect good faith out of a group if within, within mere hours of a ceasefire they, they abuse it uh, only to attack Israeli Well, then Israeli talk to me about the Canadian reaction, because you did see Sid Ryan there, and an anti-Israel. I mean, the, the Palestinian uh, casualties are mounting up, and, and that's what gets a lot of people upset, including somebody like Sid Ryan. Well, look, you know, when you see these, these uh, pictures, they're, they're upsetting to everybody, and they should be upsetting to everybody when, when innocent civilians uh, get killed. But again, I, I remind you that, you know, a lot of these pictures are, are coming from, from Hamas themselves, uh, and it doesn't talk about how many actual combatants, uh, Hamas combatants, are being killed as well. Mm. Uh, and they are the target uh, for, for Israeli uh, retaliatory strikes. As, as far as, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed to see that union members' money is, is, is being spent, I think, in a questionable way in this, uh, in this uh, way. Uh, I'll leave that to them. But um, this, is, uh, this is an upsetting uh, issue. Uh, nobody wants to live like that, uh, least of all the Israelis. The Israelis just want a normal life and to get on with, with things without having to face uh, rocket fire. And uh, fortunately for Israel, uh, they have created uh, the Iron Dome system of uh, anti-rocket, uh, which Still, is Still, it does come home in your particular case, because uh, some people in your riding, for instance, have been radicalized, whether it's uh, by Hamas or sure. other groups. Well, they're, they're, you know, this is, this is the danger abroad. Um, these groups are very good at recruiting and are very good at rec uh, radicalizing youth. In fact, I heard one figure from, uh, from a CIA anal analyst that said that uh, uh, some, some people are susceptible to being radicalized in two days. And wow. that, is, that is very, very troubling. And the problem is these kids go over, uh, they become uh, radicalized fighters, and inevitably they're all killed. Uh, they're, they're fodder for, for these radical uh, groups. And this is something... More than just Hamas, it's Islam. Well, more than just typically. Hamas. Uh, you know, it's Al-Shabaab, it's Al-Qaeda, it's, it's others. I mean, they, they all share one thing, and, and it's a radicalized, fanatical belief. Uh, and this is something that uh, we here in Canada, United States, all Western uh, nations need to be 
uh, highly concerned about because uh, the kids in our in our ridings in our countries are, are susceptible to this as well. Many have been radicalized and have gone over. You've heard the, the news reports and uh, of, of those uh, that may survive, you know, coming back uh, to their countries of origin, including Canada. And that's very very troubling that we have to work on. I do work with kids in uh, in my area to uh, to make sure that they're aware of that threat. And and I have other issues too. There's, you know, Ballpark, gang how many warfare. Kids, how many kids are we talking about? And they go over, for instance, from your writing. Just pick a number. Uh, well, from my writing, I can't tell you exactly. But from the from the GTA area, it's um, you know we we know of 25 or so last year, the year before that had gone over, and, wow. and to, to to my knowledge, uh, they've almost all perished. Uh, so that's uh, that's scary. There's there's higher numbers and different figures to rely on. But this is something that's a phenomenon not just in Canada. It's a phenomenon around the world. And yeah. uh, and these groups are relentless in the recruitment of of youth and trying to get them to uh, to sign up and to basically sacrifice themselves, and whether suicide bombing or or as uh, combatants against uh, whoever they happen to be fighting. Ted, thanks very much. Thanks for coming in and telling us that story. Ted Oakwood's joining us, uh, and MP for uh, Etobicoke Centre. But speaking about radicals, did uh, Bill Clinton, when he was president, have the opportunity to take out a key player? We're going to have that discussion.